your name, Father. We worship you, oh Lord, of your majesty. King of glory, we say, hallowed be your name. Rose of Sharon, we salute you. We salute you. We throw away our salute tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship you. Are You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Even unto every one of us, in that 
you got signs and seasons in your hand. You call for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you
Healer, you are a powerful healer. You are a powerful healer. 
He's the God of everything, God of today. He is our God. He knows everything concerning us. Just lift your hands and just worship the Lord this evening. Tell him you are Yahweh. You are my all. You are my everything. You surpasses all my all. You surpasses, you go ahead of my all. You go over my all. You go over my everything. You are my all. You are Yahweh. You are my all in all. Lord, we worship you this evening, God. We give you glory, Father. Father, we acknowledge you. We behold the beauty of your glory and we marvel at your glory, oh God, this evening. Daddy, you are glorious. You are powerful. We stand in awe of you, King of Kings. We stand in awe of you, Lord of Lords. We stand in awe of you, God of all creation. We marvel at your glory. We marvel at the beauty of your glory this evening, oh God. My Father, you are holy. Lord, you are glorious. Lord, you are powerful. You are holy, Lord. You are holy, Lord. You are holy, Lord. Lord, we shine, my Father, the, air, the heavenly host, oh God. We declare you are holy, God. You are holy, Father. You are holy. Holy is our God. Mighty is our God. Great is our God. Powerful is our God. Mighty massive is our God. Lord, you are great. We declare your greatness, Father God. You are holy. You are powerful, God. We acknowledge your greatness, Lord God, this evening. You are holy, Father. We worship you, God. We worship you, Lord, Father. You are holy. Oh, God, we bless your name. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 say in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth before the creation God was there God existed outside the beginning he is God nothing can dictate his existence because he existed before anything was into being is there anything that you feel that it can dictate God or can make 
like you can cause you dictate God. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. He existed before the beginning. He was outside the beginning and he created the heaven and the earth. And he brought everything that you see and that can, you cannot see into being. And so sometimes we see things that we go through. We see the situations that we go through. And we think that they are bigger, that they existed before God. We think that they can terrify God. And we measure the existence of God with what we see. And we ask God, are you God? God, are you there? And we ask God, are you sure you are there? God above all things. Before the beginning, he was God. Before he created all these things, before all these challenges came into being, he was God. And he says, see, don't look at the things that you are seeing and that are terrifying you. And you are tempted to question me. For I know the thought that I have for you. The Bible says the thoughts of God towards us are as the sand by the seashore. Can you count the sand or by the seashore? Those are the thoughts of God concerning us. Before everything, before anything, before you face what you are facing, God was there. And God is still there. And God will always be there. Praise the Lord. Our God, I want you to understand that God, you cannot question the existence of God. Because you don't know his age. You don't know how many years he is. How many year old is he? He is God. He is God, the ancient of days. Just lift your hands and tell God, I appreciate you. I acknowledge your existence, oh God. I acknowledge that you exist. And I am in agreement that, Lord, you exist above everything. I, 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 I am in agreement that, Lord God, you exist above anything that may terrify me. Because, God, you are God. And from the beginning to the end, you remain God. Whether I go through the, the the valley of death, the shadow of death, you are God. I will fear no evil because God is with me. Because Jehovah Shammah is there. God is there. He say, I am that I am. Wherever you are, I am there. Whatever it is, I am the help. Father God, we appreciate you this evening. That whatever we face, whatever we see, Lord, it does not outlive you. It does not out overpower you. It does not demean you, God. You remain God. Forever you are God. Forever you are God. In my life, Lord, forever you will be God. In every situation, Lord, forever you will be God. I will not question your existence. I will not question your position in my life. Because I know that you are my God. I know that you are my God. That them that know their God shall be strong. And because they know their God, they shall be strong enough to do exploits. Lord, because I know you, I'll not be weak. Because I know you, I'll not walk weakly. Because I know you, Lord God, I will work out signs and wonders. Because I know you, situations will not, bow, will let, not make me bow my head down. Because I know my God who supersedes the times, who supersedes the seasons, who supersedes the situations, I will be strong. That when others will be, will, 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 will be fainting, I will be mounting on wings like eagles because I know my God. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. And in the same Genesis chapter, the same Genesis chapter 1, 
at verse 26. He says, and God said, let, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creep, creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and in his own image uh, and in the image of God created he him. Male and female created him them. And, he, and God blessed them. You are the blessed one of God. God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that move upon the earth. You cannot have dominion if you're not strong. The devil makes, ma makes you to feel that you are nothing, that you have no power. To have dominion over what God has given unto us. That's why he wants, he, he, he wants us to feel like we are needy of what God already gave unto us. And he says, uh, verse, verse 29, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the in in, in the wheat is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat in the beginning God created heaven and earth God created everything before he created you he made sure that he has created what you need he created everything for you so when he created you, he had already provided what you need. He created the light. The Bible says that there, 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 was, there was darkness. The world, the, the world had no form. He gave it form for your sake. He created light for your sake. He brought up things that you may have dominion over them. All that we require for this life, God has given unto us. I just want us to lift our hands and thank God for what he has, he has provided for us. You know, God has provided everything for us, but because we are not, we don't have that thank, that, that, that thankfulness, that thanking, thankful heart to thank God for. We are not able to reach what God has created for us. Father, thank you for all that you have created for us, God. Thank you, Lord God, for every provision that you have provided for us, God. And thank you because, Lord, you have blessed us, Lord God. And you have given us power and dominion over everything that you have given, you have created, oh Lord God. Father, we thank you because, God, you have given you, you have given us your image that Lord God Father we mirror you in our lives oh God Father we thank you because God you have made us to reflect you as we walk Lord God you look at us and you say that one is mirroring me that one is representing my image Father we thank you Lord help us to understand who we are Lord, help us to know the Lord God, you have given us the, the, the privilege, oh Lord God, my Father. Lord, Father God, to watch over what you have created to, for us, God. We bless your name, Father. Receive all the glory, God. And we love you, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Do we have a praise report today? Auntie Faye is there. She has a praise report. Please come over.
Let's have that testimony microphone, please. Ajife, I was just thinking about you today. I missed, we missed you on Sunday. Okay, praise the Lord. I'll just thank God for who he is. Oh, stay way over here so y'all can see me. <laughs> okay. I'll just, I'm thanking God for who he is. I thank him for his blessings. I thank him for his grace and mercy. Um, my praise report is that like she was saying, we know who we are in God, and God has provided everything for it, but the devil try to put like a dullness on you, like, God ain't real, but I know he's real. And then he try to come and attack me in my body. And every time I come to church, I get ready to come, my body used to hurt so bad. It's like, I'm at home, I'm good, or I can get away. When it's time to come to church, my body was hurting so bad. But I still pushed my way. So I said, Lord, I mean, Pastor, have, we could go to, we're going to have a, a spiritual encounter. So I was praying and in sin, like, Lord, reveal to me what's going on with my body. <laughs> and so he did. It's the things that you eat. He showed me it's the stuff that you eat. It was some stuff, uh, some medication I'm taking that don't agree with what I'm eating. Come to find out one of the medications that I'm taking, I can't eat grapefruits. And I love grapefruits. I love them. I eat them like kids eat candy. <laughs> so that's why I was having that pain. Like a, I had this heavy weight in my body that I couldn't even walk. It was like I, some leg was on me and I couldn't walk. It was just painful. And so I thank God for that. I thank God for just being obedient to when pastor give us the word. We're getting fed by our pastor. And just what you call retaining the word and then waiting for the revelation. So I'm thanking God that I'm be able to do that in a quiet place recently. And then when we come here, we're not just coming, like he said, we're not coming here for the past, we're not coming here for brother, we're coming to get rest. Uh, revelation from the Lord. And I thank God for the ministry. I thank God for everything I'm learning. Thank him that I'm growing. And I just thank God. And then I have my other present for us about financial. Everybody's like, what's coming? But I'm in a, I had put a seed. And God had told me what, how much to plant, and I plant the seed. And ever since then, I have been financially. <laughs> and I thank God. I thank God for that. And I just ask that you guys just pray that I grow stronger and stronger in life. Amen. Praise God. Congratulations. Hallelujah. I have a press report. Um, two Saturdays ago, the guy came to the shop to steal. So he, um, my co-workers, so they were trying to talk to him. So they couldn't, he was trying to pretend that it was, he didn't steal the stuff, right? So they called me. They said, hey, mommy, it looks like you're going to have to step up and talk to this dude. Maybe he will understand your language. So I, I was trying to talk to him. So he, he didn't find it funny. Then I said, okay, can I check your bag? He said, you cannot check my bag. I said, you know what? You know I know you. Let me check your bag. Let's prove to them that they are lying. He said, okay, Kemi, you know I trust you. I love you, right? So I said, about opening the bag. Now he wants to take off running. So I, I used the military style. So he fell down on his face. So I punched him. I, I'm confessing though. So I, 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 I punched him, grabbed the stuff, told everybody else. And I said to him, you take another step. I will, you know, I will have you dead. And he was like, <laughs> I am really, really making a confession. So I, 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 I attacked him. So he jumped up, took a knife, and pointed it at me. I said, oh, no, now you reminded me, my old military self. So I 
punched him. The knife came off of him. I punched him another one. He fell on his neck and he hit his head. Mommy Lavina came, said, Oh, is he dead? I said, <laughs> so the point is, somehow he fell, grabbed the knife, ran away, right? So all my stuff I was able to you know, took everything. Come to find out by the time the police, everybody that was looking at us, now it was outside. They already called the police, so the police came and they watched the video. They said, how come you are not in the Fresno police department? <laughs> if you can get a six foot and man down on the ground by yourself, then we need you in the front of, what I'm trying to say. So I got home, I felt bad. I felt really bad in my spirit. Two days, I was still feeling bad. I could not. So I just went on my knees. I started praying for this guy. I said, God, let him have a heart of repentance. Now, all these detectives been calling me. They came to my house. That, okay, it's going to be the point because of the knife. So it's more of a felony, that kind of a thing, if I want to press charges. So I started praying. So two, two days ago, they said, this guy came to the shop looking for me for repentance. If I can forgive her, I may forgive him. I just want to thank God that you know, somehow because I was interceding for his soul, I don't know we checked his bag all this credit card, everybody's ID card was in his bag so how many people has he been threatened, as he, as he actually threatened with those knives, to collect their wallet, to collect their money, to collect their property, but he came back and said he has not felt peace since that day the police looking for him, he knows the police looking for him, but he just wants intentionally to come and apologize and for me to pray for him, for God to forgive. I just want to thank God that that small little encounter changed, uh, changed him. And I pray that he will not, now that he has an encounter with God, that God Almighty will let that spirit stay with him and it will take away every evil spirit from him in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you Holy Spirit for the strength and I bless your name in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Father God we thank you. This shows how great you are oh God. Father we thank you because all the time you intervene in our situations, oh God, Father. And Father, you show yourself strong. And we testify of your goodness. Father, we thank you. That Lord, it was not by the might and power of Mamikimi. But God, you intervened, oh God. And you showed yourself mighty and strong. Lord, we want to give you all the glory. And we want to give you honor. Thank you, Lord God, for all the testimonies, God, that we have had and those that we are yet to hear, Father. We give you praise, Lord. Receive all the honor and all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let us stand up on our feet this evening. And let's just worship God. Let's just lift our hands and worship God. I just feel like us worshiping God tonight. Just pouring our hearts Christ before Lord. God to worship him. It's an atmosphere, a very good atmosphere to worship our God. Lord, we worship you, God. Oh, Lord, we worship you, God. Holy you Lord, oh creation. Call 
all you got what is your name we
Yes, Lord. Lift up your hands and just worship him. Give him praise, magnify him. Mighty is his name. He alone is worthy of our praise. He alone is worthy of our honor. He is alone is worthy of our reverence. We bow down before your throne. We say, Mighty is your name, Lord. Glorious is your name, Lord. Awesome is your name, Lord. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you for bringing us again into your presence. Thank you for drawing us unto your presence tonight. Lord, touch us afresh by your spirit. Refreshing us again in your presence. Renew our strength, Lord, even tonight. Empower us afresh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, speak to us, Lord, tonight. We want to hear from you. We want to be impacted by you. We want to be empowered by you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we await your touch, Lord, tonight. Touch us at the point of our needs. Send your word, Lord, that will heal us and will deliver us from every of our destructions. Send your word of restoration. Guide us by your word tonight. Holy Spirit of God, you are the teacher of the truth. Teach us tonight. Let your name alone be glorified in all that will be said tonight. Let your name be honored in all that we will do tonight. And let your name be praised even in our lives. Thank you, King of Glory. Receive all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Let's put our hands together and we may please be seated in his presence. God bless you, everyone that has come to be in his presence. I warmly welcome you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And my prayer is that you will not live here the same way you have come in the name of Jesus. Every issues that has bothered you, every concern that you might have will be settled here tonight by his word in the name of Jesus. There shall be restoration. There will be leading and guidance of the Lord in the name of Jesus. The Lord will guide you and he will lead you to your glorious places in Jesus' mighty name. In Romans chapter 4, verse, chapter four, 8, verse 14, says, As many that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons and the daughters of God. As many that are led by the Spirit. So the leading of God is a leading by a Spirit. And that's why this month, we must be in the spirit this month we must be sensitive to the things of the spirit this month we must be quiet in our spirit that we may receive the leading of the spirit of god said he endless expectation of the creation is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God so there are people out there that are waiting for you to manifest there are people 
out there that is wondering who, who this one calls him or herself a son of God when is she going to manifest he says I'm many that are led by the spirit they are the sons so it takes the spirit of the Lord it takes us being in the spirit for us to hear from God in Revelation chapter 1 verse 10 John said I was in the spirit and I had a voice saying I was in the spirit then I had a voice I had a voice behind me a great voice as a trumpet brethren if you want to hear God you can't continue to live a natural life until people see you and say ah, this one everything about you is just you just spiritual brethren you are a spirit being if you want God to lead you to guide you you must live in the realm of the spirit I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a great voice for you to connect with the voice of God you must be a man and a woman of the spirit you cannot live in the natural and expect to manifest in the spirit it is the spirit of God he said as many that are led by the spirit they are the sons of God brethren we must stop everything that pertains to carnality and we begin to embrace spirituality we must turn our back from everything that is ordinary natural begin to em embrace the supernatural then you begin to see God speaking to you clearly you begin to hear the great voice of the God in, his, in your spirit man this is that month that you need to manifest as the sons and the daughters of God this because many there are confusion everywhere many are seeking direction many are seeking options you are that solution you are that option you are the people that should blaze the trail why others follow why because you are hearing directly from God choose to be different don't join the pack allow God to speak to you and that's why tonight if you want to take full advantage of what the Lord wants to say tonight I want you to receive it by your spirit the word that I speak to you they are spirit and they are life so as the Lord speaks tonight I want you to open up your spirit man to receive every doctrine that you have heard before every tradition custom that has been a veil preventing you from gaining access to the voice of God I pray that you will cast them aside and you open up yourself to the truth of the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus because God is set to speak again are you going to choose to be in the spirit or are you going to choose to remain in your natural normal mentality self instead of embracing spirituality when you embrace spirituality you are able to manifest as sons and daughters of God he said you should know that you are gods and you are sons of the living God I like you to put your hands together as I invite Pastor Barry to speak to us tonight 
because the Lord has put his word in his mouth and I'm I'm said to hear that great voice of the spirit because my spirit is open to receive tonight and I know that as you receive it the Lord will reveal himself to you even as he did to John in the book of Revelation God bless you man of God hallelujah hallelujah we give glory to God tonight because he is good amen and he has done good things I believe to all of us if not most of us amen and I'm saying most of us because at times it is hard for us to acknowledge the things that God is doing at times we think it is because of who we are but it is because of what God has done it is about God amen and so father this evening I want to thank you I want to bless your name because you are good God Lord we humble in your presence and we pray the Lord you will speak to us my father through these lips of clay anoint them and let Jehovah God every word that comes forth Lord speak to us guide us direct us and Lord also chastise us father we pray that God that your word shall we continue father to meditate upon day and night and we shall not let this word father be we shall continue Lord to, con do, to do everything that you have commanded us to do O Lord and so your word says that we shall have good success and be prosperous O Lord we thank you and we bless you we pray for the Holy Spirit to take control tonight in the mighty name of Jesus we worship you O God in Jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. we give glory to God let's be seated in God's presence I want to take this opportunity very quickly to appreciate my senior pastor, my spiritual father, Pastor Dr. Stifa Bule, and our covenant mother, Pastor Kimi. I always feel uh, glad and I always acknowledge them with a lot of joy in my heart because I know exactly why I'm saying that. And uh, it is a revelation that God has put in me that I should always acknowledge the spiritual parents that he has put uh, me under. There are so many people out there who are spiritual orphans. We have so many spiritual orphans. Some of them are under their spiritual uncles and spiritual aunties and spiritual... We have all different kinds of spiritual guidance, but it is important that you locate your spiritual father and your spiritual mother. And it is divine because God is not a God of confusion. He works in order. Our God is not as confused as men tend to try to think that God is. When he says he will do something, he is faithful to do what he has commanded. What he has said, he will do, he will do it. Amen. And so when he says, honor your father and mother, so that your days may be long. For you who want to have long days in this world, if Christ tarries, you just have to do exactly that. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so don't feel upset each time I try to recognize my father and my mother in the Lord. I pray that God will also give you the same revelation to identify your father and your mother so that you may not be an orphan spiritually. Amen. It is very important. And so tonight, very quickly, I want to bring the word of the Lord to us, what God has put in my heart, in my spirit, to share with us. It is a message that I have been meditating upon for some time. And uh, when God brought this to my spirit, I realized that it is in line with our uh, theme for the month of September, which is divine guidance for my restoration. And so restoration is uh, getting back what has been lost or getting back what has been taken away from you. Restoration is recovering that which you already had. 
restoration is being brought back to where you are you are in a position and then by for whatever reasons you left that position or you left what you had uh, where you are and then now you are being brought back or your possessions are being brought back i know we have uh, been talking about david and how he recovered all according to to the book of first samuel chapter 30 if we read the whole of that uh, chapter it tells us how david recovered all from the amalekites so recovering when you recover what you have already lost you are restoring you are bringing it back it was there before the enemy came and took it away from you or you lost it for whatever reasons and now you are getting it back you are restoring it or you are being brought back you are being restored amen and restoration comes when there is deliverance restoration does not just come it comes when deliverance has taken place I know at times we say I don't require deliverance prayers for deliverance or I don't require to go through a deliverance class or a deliverance teaching but you know when you are not delivered from whatever circumstances or from whatever spell or from your habits if you are not delivered out of them it is hard for you to recover what you had lost as your possession it is impossible for you to be brought back to what exactly who you are supposed to be according to the purpose which God has made you so when you allow deliverance to take place then you are opening the doors for a full recovery you are opening your doors for a full restoration so to get complete restoration you must allow deliverance to be administered to be ministered to you you must allow yourself to go through the process of seeking for God's face of seeking for God's divine guidance and being led to understand what exactly is the issue with you or what exactly the enemy has done to take away what you had so for you to undergo this process to, to, to be restored or to restore your possessions you must allow deliverance to take place and so tonight I'm going to share with us what we can do to be able to attack the camps of the enemy and restore what the enemy has stolen when you attack the camp of the enemy when his camp when his uh, stronghold is attacked and destroyed that is when you are able now to go into that camp and take back what the enemy had taken away from you so the first thing is to make sure that you know who the enemy is and you know the target where the target is so when you attack that target you are able to recover what the enemy has taken from you but you cannot do that unless you know where the enemy is unless you know who the enemy is amen and so today i'm going to take us to this scripture in the book of second kings second kings 13 uh, i read from verse 14 maybe to 19 second kings um, I read from nine, from 14 second kings 14 second kings chapter 14 the bible says uh, in the book of second kings chapter 14 and uh, chapter 13 rather 13 and verse 14 the bible says elisha had become sick with the illness of which he will die then Joash the king of Israel came down to him and wept over his face unto to mark that and said oh my father my father the chariots of Israel and their horsemen and Elisha said to him take a bow 
and some arrows so he took himself a bow and some arrows then he said to the king of Israel put your hand on the bow so he put his hand on it and Elisha put his hands on the king's hands and he said open the east window and he opened it then Elisha said shoot and he shot shoot and he shot and he said the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria for you must strike the Syrians at Afek till you have destroyed them then he said take the arrows so he took them and he said to the king of Israel strike the ground so he struck three times and stopped how many times he struck three times and stopped and the man of God was angry with him and said you should have struck five or six times then you will have struck Syria till you had destroyed it but now you will strike Syria only three times amen I believe already some of us know where I'm, go- I'm heading to he said take out the arrows and strike and he struck three times and Elisha told him thou now shall strike Syrians only three times and instead of five or six times or more now we all know the story of Elisha and Elijah we know that Elisha prayed for the double portion of his master Elijah or of his prophet Elijah and when Elisha received the double portion of the anointing that Elijah had the Bible tells us of the great things that Elisha did until this point when he is on his deathbed he is on his sick bed the Bible says that he was at the point of death he was sick that he will die when you read that kind of script of, of passage in the Bible that so and so was sick that he will die it means that he came and died but the Bible is taking us back to prepare us for what is ahead of us and so we know that Elijah a man of God who walked with God and God used him mightily a man who prayed over the sacrifice when the he had this discussion with the prophet of Baal and they set up their sacrifices and the Bible says that when Elisha prayed over his own sacrifice which was soaked with water that God answered by fire that the fire came down consumed the sacrifice and also consumed the water and the, sac- the fire lit the water as if it was lighting uh, you know kerosene or, 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 or petrol or gas because the fire of God changed the water from being just water but it made the water burn like oil and so Elijah was a man that God used mightily that God could answer his prayer with such an intense fire but we know that when Elijah had done all this and he heard that this woman Jezebel was after his life Elijah ran and went and hid himself in a cave and the Bible says that God asked Elijah what are you doing in the cave and he said I am afraid because this wicked woman wants to kill me and you know I'm the only prophet that is left and so if I die then there'll be no other prophet who is left and that is the same thing when uh, you know people think that okay now I'm gonna make judgments because I am the only you know minister of the word who is left and there's no other but God told Elijah I'm going to show you that you are not the only prophet who is left that's why we always have to be very careful when it comes to making judgments over ministries over churches over preachers I see the 
social media people are using the social media to try and uh, you know blaspheme god by criticizing other preachers or crit- criticizing other ministries it is very dangerous god tells elijah i have 7000 more prophets out there that have never bowed to any idol and so be on your way that I may show you to go and anoint the king and the prophet that will take over from you. And the Bible says that when Elijah was on his way, Elisha was in the field. And so Elijah passed by Elisha and his cloak, his cloth touched Elisha. Elisha, when he was touched by the cloak of Elijah, the Bible says he began to follow Elijah. And that tells you there was a divine connection between Elisha and Elijah even before they spoke. And when Elijah kept walking, he saw Elisha following him and he asked him, Why thou followest me? Why are you following me everywhere I go? And he said, I want to follow you because I want the double portion of your anointing. I want not just a hundred percent of what you carry, but I want 200 percent double portion of what you carry and elijah told him what you have asked for is not an easy thing but if you see me go then you shall receive your then your prayer shall be answered you shall receive just as you have requested and the bible says to just try and make it short when it came for the time for elijah to be taken by god now remember elijah tells elisha if you see me go which means by the power of the holy spirit elijah could even uh, you know he knew that he would go he would not just die but he would go and so that is how the power of the holy ghost speaks through the servants of god you don't need to say okay if you see me die or if I, or if when, or when i'm dead you can go so elijah said if you see me go then it shall be according to your request amen and the bible says that when they came to the jordan elijah took his mantle and struck the river and the river jordan opened and they crossed over to the other side of the river and behold what did elisha see he saw the chariots of, of, and horsemen of fire. And the Bible says when he saw that, he said, My father, my father, behold the horsemen and the, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. Remember, this is the same sentiment that King Josh has now come to use where Elisha's, Elisha is lying. Because the other story of Elijah and Elisha was in 2nd Kings chapter 12 if you read uh, chapter 2 rather but now in chapter 13 we see that Elisha the same words when he saw the chariots when he said my father my father behold the chariots and the horsemen of Israel now King Joash who was not there with Elisha by the spirit of god when he comes to the deathbed of elisha elisha was lying on his bed and king joash came to him and he cried out to him and he said my father my father behold the chariots of israel if you can read that that part in second kings 13 and uh, uh, verse number number 14 he say the bible says that then Joash the king of Israel came down to him and wept over his face. King Joash wept over the face of Elisha and said, Oh my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. These are the same words, same, same words that Elisha when he saw the chariots come, he said, My father, my father, behold the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. So there is a connection. Now, what was the problem? Why did Joash come to Elijah? The Bible says it was because Syria had taken over Israel, had taken over Israel's land. And now Joash says that, after saying that, Elisha says to Joash, take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. So Joash came to, to, to Elisha because he knew Elisha was going to die. But Elisha would not just die before leaving the anointing, leaving the mantle, the power of, that he was carrying, before leaving it behind that they may use to overcome their enemies. 
And the Bible says when Joash had wept over the face of Elisha, cried to him, Elisha, a sick man on that bed, because he walked with God and God was using him mightily. This is a man who had power. If you read further in, in verse 20 of that same passage, the Bible says that when Elisha was buried, there was woe later and there was a man who was killed, who died in the battle. And when they were trying to bury these men, they saw they attack, they, their enemies coming to attack them. And so they threw this man in a, in a hurry in the grave of Elisha. And when this man's body came into contact with the bones of Elisha, this man came back to life. Can you imagine that you've gone to the graves to bury somebody in the cemetery and the moment you drop him in the, in the grave, he just jumps up. Because the man who had been buried there, Elisha, the man of God, who had been buried in that grave, he was still powerful. Even the bones, his dry bones were still powerful. That is the power, that is to tell you that you are not powerful just because you can breathe. God can use you. God can still have you as a vessel because these bones of Elisha were waiting for this man to, be, to fall into the grave for the man to come up alive. And that's why the Bible says when that happened, the spirit of God does not die. The spirit of God works through any vessel. So he he got into the grave, his body got into contact with Elisha and he jumped out of the grave. So when his people were running away from the enemies, he, they looked back and they saw the man they had gone to bury was following them even faster than they could imagine. These people were running away from the enemies, but when they looked back who was following them, their own dead person had gotten into contact with the bones of Elisha. Praise the Lord. But the Bible says, when Joash, King Joash had done that, had wept over the face of Elisha, Elisha knew that he had to bless Israel before he died. Because he knew that it is not by power nor by might that we are able to conquer or to overcome our battles. It is by the anointing. It is by the Spirit of God. And so he commanded the king and said, take out your bow and your arrows. So the king pulled out the bow and the arrow. For those who do not know the bow, if you haven't gone hunting, the bow is, uh, it's, that, it's, like a, it's, like, it's a curved kind of, uh, mostly we use uh, you know, wooden sticks. So you tie the rope from one end down to the other end. And then the arrow, you put on that string and you pull it back for leverage and to, to, to give it power. So that if you release the arrow, it goes to the target, either to go and kill an, an animal, and some people use it as a weapon in the wars, in the battles down there in Africa. But you see, Elisha told the king, put the arrow on the bow, and he did what the, what the men of God had said. He put the arrow on the bow, and he said, now shoot. But before he did that, he said, open the window. He opened the window. Put now the arrow he did. And then the man of God took his hand and put his hand on the king's hand, which was holding the arrow. That is the power that we always receive when the man of God lays hand on you. At times you see people, they want to be laid hands on, but they come and there's maybe because of makeup or because of whatever it is, they don't want to, to be touched. They don't want to be touched by the man of God. There is power that God releases through his servant. It is the power of God that is released through his servant to touch you and to cause you to be delivered from the, from the bondage that the enemy has put you in. But because of the fear and because of the of the lies of the enemy you try to to protect yourself to safeguard yourself oh this anointing oil should not even fall on me because this oil it is so it is it is so you know it it it, it glitters so much i don't want this oil on my face just touch me without the oil or just hold my hand but elisha knew that if i bless the king then israel shall be delivered but now the second 
thing that the king does wrong is when Elisha tells the king, take another arrow. Strike on the ground. Strike the ground. And he took another arrow and he struck the ground. One, two, three, and he stopped. When they tell us, okay, saints, lift up your hands. Let's begin to worship our God. Your hands are down here, God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Oh, saints, let's put our hands together and praise God. You can't praise God. You can't put your hands together to praise God because you want to be, you, you know, you, you, you are a gentleman. You don't want to, to, to shake. You don't want to put your hands together because you don't want to, to be seen to be this man who is all over the place. Oh, let's worship. Let's praise God. You can't even make a move. The Bible says in Isaiah 12 and, and verse 3 that out that with joy shall we draw waters out of the springs of salvation. It has to be with joy. What the king was being told was to be ready for the battle. The prophet said, hit the ground. He said you should have hit even five, six, seven, even more times. Why did you just hit three times and then you stopped? Why did you just praise God once and then you disappear? You come back after one month, oh pastor, pray for me. It's been so hard out there. How have you been? Oh, you know, COVID-19 and everything, I'm not doing good. And then you disappear. You come back again after three weeks. Oh, man of God, you know, pray for me because my brother, my sister, my... And then they pray for you. Then you go again. You come back after two months. Oh, man of God, you know, we are together. I've been so busy. Pray for me. You cannot get victory, you cannot get your, your full restoration if you are a passive Christian. Elisha is telling the king, why did you stop at the third stri- stroke? Why? Just three times. Does it mean you're not, you're not enthusiastic enough? You're not passionate enough? You have to be joyful. You have to rejoice. You have to use what you have and do it with enthusiasm. Whatever you want to do, if you want to serve the Lord, serve the Lord with with enthusiasm. Serve the Lord passionately. Give yourself to the Lord with all that you are. Because you cannot do it just haphazardly. And expect God to do what you want him to do. Does God delight in our cries? Remember, King Joash came to Elisha crying. He wept at his face. He was weeping, crying. But did Elisha rejoice with him in his crying? No. He told him it's time for action and not time for crying. Don't cry. Why are you crying? And you have the bow and the arrow. Put it together. Hold the arrow. Pull it back. Shoot. For how long shall we continue to cry? For how long shall we continue to to, to weep at the men of God's feet? For how long? Shall we be reminded that praising God is not a seasonal thing? Praising God is a daily thing. Praising God is supposed to be all the time, in season and out of season. For how long shall we be reminded that we cannot serve God lazily? When it's time for God, we must arise and run and serve Him. Just like when you are invited for a wedding of your, of, your, of your niece, your nephew, your brother. You are invited for a wedding. You are there even before the groom arrives. But when it comes to the things of God, you are not there. Why? Because of COVID-19. You can't even turn on your, your, your social media. You can't even turn on your Facebook to connect to the preaching. Why? Because you are too busy. But when it comes to the party of barbecue and every good other good thing, you're going to be there before they even light the fire for the barbecue. This is what Elisha is telling the king Joash. Why just three times? Why so lazily? Do it with all your might. You will have stuck it even more so that you may be able to, to accomplish the mission of destroying the Assyrians, attacking them and winning over them more times. 
So the more you praise God, the more God delights in your, in your praises. God does not delight in your cries. Let nobody lie to you that when you, you cry and hide yourself in a corner and keep crying and crying that you are pleasing God. You cannot please God with your tears. You can only please God by rejoicing and praising his name. And that's why we see in Philippians 4 and verse 6 that we should rejoice always. We should always rejoice, rejoice. Because our anxiety is not for anything but our anxiety is for supplication. And through rejoicing, we praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Elijah, Elisha knew that the problem with the king was lack of commitment. It was lack of joy. It was lack of self-joy. Lack of, of enthusiasm. Lack of passion. That's why the, the Syrians came and took over the land. And so he knew the only thing this man needs to do is to receive a second touch. To receive a touch which was divine to help him into the battles. Amen. But now you see, yes we go, we go through many things here in the world. And Jesus said I pray for them because they are in the world but they are not of the world. But you see for us to accomplish this we must know firstly. What are we supposed to do? Already you have the bow and the arrow. And that's why today my message I titled The Arrow of God's Deliverance and Restoration. The Arrow of God's Deliverance and Restoration. The Arrow of God's Deliverance and Restoration. That arrow. That arrow is the word of God. That, word, that arrow is the word of God. Remember when Jesus Christ was taken to the mountain, by, led by, by the Spirit to the mountain. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 that Jesus was led by the Spirit to the mountain. He did not just walk to the mountain, but he was led by the Spirit to the mountain. And it says to do what? To be tested by the enemy. Let's just, let's just read that uh, scripture because at times we, 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 we skip those uh, short letters uh, in short words like 2. Matthew 4 and verse 1. Jesus was led by the Spirit to the mountain to be tested by the enemy. It says then was Jesus led up of the Spirit. Of the spirit. Uh, I know NIV, NIV says by the Spirit. So Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness or into the desert to be tempted. To do what? To be tempted. So he was led to be tempted. He wasn't going there because he was going now to relax after the 40 days of prayer and fasting. No. The Spirit of God led him so that he may be tempted just like you can you are led to be tempted you are led to be tried if you want to be born again and live in a world of no temptations then you are not living in this world you are not leading yourself to be tempted but you are led to be tempted now to be tempted by the devil himself and some of us, we are only tempted by the demons <laughs> and not the devil himself. To be tempted by the devil. But we know this scripture. The Bible says that when the enemy spoke to Jesus, what did he do? He referred everything in the word. He spoke the word. He shot the word at him. He knew he had his arrows. So when the enemy shoots his arrows you already have your shield of salvation so when you have that shield you are able to deflect every arrow that comes from the enemy's side but you have your arrows that you keep shooting at the enemy and so when he was tempted he knew that he had his arrows we must know our target as we read in 2nd Kings 13 but Elisha told the king to shoot eastward. Eastward, that was towards the camp which was called Afek. And Afek 
If you read uh, in the previous scriptures uh, passage, you'll see that Afek was on the western side of the river Jordan. But now Elisha is saying, shoot eastward. So you may wonder, why shoot eastward if Afek was in the western side of the Jordan? It is not by power, nor by might. He said, just shoot, open the windows. Let the arrow go and find the enemy, wherever the enemy is. Let the arrow go and find the enemy whenever the enemy is. And so he shot. And while the arrow was flying out, when the arrow had taken off, Elisha said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. The arrow of the Lord's victory. The arrow of the Lord's healing. The arrow of the Lord's restoration. Behold, the arrow of the God of the Lord's salvation. The arrow of the Lord. So he shot the arrow and it went out of the window and as it was going, he spoke the word. He spoke the word. When you are releasing your arrow to the enemy, you are speaking the word. You don't just start crying and saying, oh, I've been sick, I've been sick, I've been down. There's nothing that I can do. Because the doctor said, I'm going to die. This thing, you can't stay with it for two months. It kills people in two weeks. When you are sick, what do you do? You take out your bow and you put the arrow of Exodus 15 and 26. You take out your arrow, you put your, your you, took, you, take the, you, you get hold of your bow and put the arrow of Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26. I want us to go together at the back. Exodus 15 and 26. When you see that the enemy is pushing you to the brinks of sickness and oblivion. You take out your arrow, put it there. And the Bible says in Exodus chapter 15 and 26 that he said, if you will carefully obey the Lord your God, tell the dev- devil I know. My God says, if I carefully obey him, he is going to have his right and do what is right in his eyes and pay attention to his commands that he will keep all his statutes and keep all statutes that he will protect me that he will protect me that his word will heal me the Bible says I will not inflict any illness on you I inflict on the children of, his, of on the Egyptians because God said that you need to obey all his, all his commandments and if you do that if you do that he will not inflict you with illness so you can tell the devil I know that this is not mine So get your arrow of Exodus chapter 15 and 26 and release that arrow into the devil's camp. And he will know you know your word. He will know this guy, he knows his stand. And you go to Psalms 103 and verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, he who forgives all sickness who forgives all sins and heals all diseases. Get your arrow of Psalms 103 and release that arrow into the enemy's camp. Shoot into his camp that verse. Let him know that you are, you have, you are armed to the teeth. When he says, okay, I know that. While he's still trying to take care of his bruises because the arrow has come and maybe to shot his, his leg. He's wondering now, this man has already shot, me, shot two arrows at me. You now release Isaiah. Um, you, you, you now release uh, Psalms 143 verse 3. He heals the broken hearts and his wounds too. So you say, you tell the devil, yeah, I know. You already, you already, you're still reeling in that pain. But here comes another arrow. Psalms 143 verse 3. Shoot at him. Let him feel it. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing me to the ground, making me live in darkness like those long dead. Go to 42 verse 4. My spirit is weak within me. My heart is overcome with dismay. And verse 5. I remember the days of all I I meditate on all you have done. I reflect on the work of your hands. And verse 6, I spread out my hands to you. I am like parched land before you, seller. And verse 7, answer me quickly, Lord. My spirit fails. Don't hide your face from me or I will be like those going down in the pit. Let the, let the devil know 
that you are, you are armed you are armed with your arrows and you can shoot Isaiah 40 verse 26 get the arrow of Isaiah 40 and 26 this arrow is the word of God it comes with power when you release the arrow when you shoot the word of God send the arrow of Isaiah 40 and 26 he healeth the stroke of their wounds Isaiah 40 and 26 look up and see who created this he brings out the starry host by number he calls all and go to the next verse Jacob why do you say and Israel why do you assert my way is hidden from the Lord and my claim is ignored by my God and now that's Isaiah 40 27 right Amen. And go to Acts 10.38. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with power, with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good. Because the devil knows that you are sick and tired. But you want to remind them, look, I have this arrow. Release Acts 10.38 to him. And you'll say, okay, I think now I'm done with you. I'm not going to touch you anymore. And so the devil will leave you because you know that he is the God who healeth you. What about when the enemy attacks your home? You should ask 16 and 31. That is a scripture you can use to shoot at the enemy. When your home is under attack, Psalm 16 and 31. Psalm 16 and 31. Psalm 16 and 31. That is Acts 10 38. And as, as for the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my. That is Psalms. Psalms. That is Psalms. Acts 16 31. That is Psalms. Acts 16 31. You need to have the right arrow for the right for the right uh, enemy for the right target so they said believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved you and your household because the enemy likes attacking homes so don't just sit there and say okay I know people are divorcing left and right so maybe even mine will not even last I know homes are breaking up so mine maybe may not work but if you shoot this arrow at the enemy's camp it destroys the camp of the enemy he knows that this brother or this sister knows where to hit us so he's hitting us with this arrow when it comes to breaking of the homes let the enemy know that that is the arrow which you have and you know brethren we cannot live in fear because of what the enemy is pushing our sides. We need to ensure that we have the hand of the man of God placed on us so that we may go into the battlefield already anointed and ready for the battle. Because the battle is not carnal. It is not of flesh and blood as, as Ephesians says in 6, 10 to 12. It is not of flesh and blood. The battle is spiritual. And so that spiritual touch that God releases through his servant, that spiritual touch is very important in the battle. It, it comes in agreement. Remember, if you are praying alone, it is okay. God will speak to you. God will touch you. God will do everything that you want. But if you allow God to speak through his servant, it comes now in double portions. It comes through him and it comes to you. And so when you're going out to the battlefield, you are ready to attack the camps of the enemy because you are carrying double portions of the power of God that works within you according to Ephesians 3 and 21. And the Bible says... As we know in Exodus 12 and 13 about the bitter waters of Mara, that God, God knew that if we are able to hearken to him, if we can turn away from our wickedness, if we can call on him, he can heal us. And so it's up to us to ensure that we have the token of God's salvation upon us. It doesn't matter what you are. It doesn't matter what people think you are in the society. What happened to Rahab? 
Rahab, the, 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 the prostitute in Joshua chapter 2. Rahab was a prostitute living in a small house on the corner of the wall of Jericho. But the Bible says that this prostitute called Rahab is the one that God used when the spies came to the land to hide the spies. And, his, and when the spies were discovered by the king that they were, in the, they were in town, she had to hide them and also let them flee, you know, run away through the, the back window, through a rope. And when they were leaving, they told Rahab one thing. That because you have done this, when we come to attack the city, we shall spare you if you do not tell them what, where we have gone to. And so Rahab exactly did what they had, say, they had said. And the good news is that they told Rahab that you and your entire household, make sure you are in the house. Because anybody that shall be outside the house will have no business with him. And that is now the power of the church. When the church stands together as one, whatever happens out there, when the arrows of the enemy are flying out there, it is impossible for us who are inside the church, inside the house of God, to be part of what is flying out there. And so they promised Rahab that we shall only protect those who are going to be in the house because the house of Rahab had been marked just like on the night of the Passover. The house of Rahab, the drop which they used to, to, to run away with, that was dangling in the back window, they knew that that same piece of cloth was the mark, was the token, was the, blood, was, was the sign that this house shall be protected. And so when we call upon fellowship of men and women, when you call upon fellowship of brethren, it is because of the safety of the children of God. It is because of the safety of those who are of the family of Christ. So that you may come into the household and be armed with the right arrows to be able to accomplish that battle which is out there. But if you are walking out there, you only appear for prayers or even connect for prayers once in a while, you are exposed because when the enemy comes to attack, the enemy knows that there is a house which has been earmarked to be protected, not to be touched. And that house, it was a ha the house of a prostitute called Rahab. But the same thing on the Passover night, when the angel of death came round, they could not touch that house that had the blood of the lamp on the door, on the on the on the on the on the, on the, on the lintel, on the doorpost. They could not touch that house because it had the token of the blood. It had the token of the power of God, which was in the blood. Brethren, we cannot afford to expose ourselves to the darts of the enemy out there. When it is time for us to serve our God passionately, we need to connect so that we may be able to arm ourselves with the right arrows. When it is time for us to strike the camp of the enemy, we are able to strike it without wondering whether we are going to win or not because we know, we are assured that the moment it has been anointed, the arrow is anointed, it is going to accomplish that way which God intends. The Bible says in the book of Haggai chapter 2 and verse 8 that gold and silver belongs to him. And so when the enemy comes to attack you, to attack your finances, it doesn't matter. Pull out that arrow of Haggai 2 and verse 8 and you throw that arrow to the, to the enemy. Release it to his camp so that the enemy will know that this brother knows that gold and silver belong to his God. And when he says that you are done, you cannot come up again, your time is over. He says, you tell the enemy, I have this arrow and shoot in his camp that I can do all, thing, all things through Christ who gives me strength. Philippians 4 and 13. When the enemy tries to demoralize you, to make you feel that you are nobody, you tell him that, you know, God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask or imagine. In Ephesians 3, 18 to 21, the Bible says that he is able to do it according to the power that is at work within us. That is the power which was within Elisha, that even when he was dead, his bones were still powerful. Hallelujah. We give glory to God. I want to thank God because... 
despite of all these troubles we are going through, there is a solution. There is a solution. And the solution is nothing but the word of God. There is a solution for us. We have the weapon. We have the arrow. And this arrow is the word of God. You all need to know which arrow to throw at the enemy. And at what time. You only need to know that when God is calling upon you to praise him. Don't just do it once, twice, or three times like King Josh did. Praise him all the time. Praise him always. Lift up your voice and you know, praise him. Rejoice in him. Don't do it lazily. Don't do it as if you're doing it to, to, to a fellow man. You're doing it to God. We have a way out when we are in trouble. Everything that we need is in the word of God. Everything we are going through, we can take care of it by using the arrow which is the word of God. We can do it and we can overcome the enemy. We can restore everything that we have lost to the enemy because of the arrow of the lost deliverance and restoration. Release the arrow to the enemy's camp and speak a word on it. Don't just start crying and, you know, and, and whining and, and complaining of what is, what is happening in your life. It doesn't matter what it is. Stir up yourself. You can't go into the battlefield when you are gloomy and, 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 and looking tired and, 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 and lazy. You can't go into any warfare. Even spiritual warfare requires somebody who is strong, who is energized in the spirit. Your bones may be weak, yes. You may be crawling on your, on, on your belly, yes, it's okay. You may be unable even to, to arise and walk. But in your spirit, you must stir up yourself. Stir up your spirit and face the battle with the arrows that God has given to us in his word. These are the arrows that will bring restoration. These are the arrows that will be guided accordingly because God knows that all these things, in as much as we are led by the Spirit to be tempted, He knows that we can overcome if we shoot the right arrows. Amen? And so I want to thank God tonight because of time and us to just go before the Lord and begin to thank Him and to ask him to guide us even through the remaining part of this month our month of restoration I want us to bless his name because already he is doing something as we have had the testimonies and whatever we are seeing happening amongst us already it is symbolic it is a confirmation that God is doing something is restoring many things that the enemy had stolen in our lives in the lives of his people health wise financially people that had left even you know the 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 the, the walk with god god is restoring them and that is the joy that we have that god is doing things before our watch we know god does not sleep nor slumber if we are able to stand in our positions if we can position ourselves properly and hear from him and be able to use the word as the arrow in our in our warfare then we shall become uh, or we shall become overcomers as the word says in Romans 8 and 28 we are more than conquerors and we shall become overcomers and more than conquerors because God has already predestined us to be such in Jesus mighty name Father God we thank you even as I bring back our senior pastor Lord we bless you we worship you because God, your word, Father, has reminded us that we, we have the arrow in our hands, O oh God. That we should use this arrow because God, this arrow will go straight into the camp of the enemy and destroy those camps while we receive our victory, O oh God, Lord. We'll continue to speak your word because your word is powerful. Your word represents you, O oh God. When your word is spoken, it is you, God, my Father, who is being mentioned, O oh Lord. So, Lord, we thank you because, God, your people 
shall use your word, my Father, in every situation because there's nothing which has been left out. Everything that we need is in the word. Everything that, Lord, that we desire is in the word. And Lord, I pray that your word shall go out there even into the camps of those who do not know you and receive you and accept you, Lord, and that they may turn away from their wicked ways. We thank you, everlasting Father. We pray that, God, that the church shall stand strong because, Lord, we are going to stand in the position and shoot the right arrows, my Father, even unto the targets in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We bless you, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Power, the arrow of restoration, arrow of deliverance. And he said that arrow is what? The arrow is what? Is the word of God. You know, many are just, they give up easily. Or when they, they win a battle, they let go. Instead of holding on to win the war, you, you prayed, God gave you victory in that battle. Instead of continue to speak, instead of continue to pray, instead of continue to praise, we become complacent. And not knowing that there is the war is still going on. You've only won part of the battle. And that was the same situation with the with the king that came to Elisha. He won the battle. But he ended up losing the war. Why? Because instead of continuing to shoot the arrows, instead of continuing to persist, diligence, committed, zealous, he, he let go prematurely. And like we've had tonight, you know, when we are too quick to, 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 to forget where we came from. We are too quick to, to forget where God brought us from. When we think we've already arrived, not knowing that the enemy is still waiting. He's still waiting. But he said, because of time, I wouldn't go into this, but if you take time to read Luke 21 from verse 10 to, to 15 go and read it there are battles there are wars there are adversaries but he said it will end for you as what as a testimony why? Why, did God, why was God so sure of that? Because he said, I have given you a mouth and a wisdom that the adversary cannot resist nor gainsay. He said nations will rise against nations. There will be battles everywhere. There will be wars everywhere. But for you and your household, it will end as a testimony. Why? Because in verse 15, I have given you a mouth and what? A wisdom. You cannot stop speaking. You cannot stop speaking the word. That is how your victory is achieved and that is how the battles and the wars shall be won. Luke 21, 
10 to 15. And I pray that every battle that God has won for you shall be permanent in the name of Jesus. And every battle you are going through, every war concerning your children, concerning your health, concerning your family, these are multiple battles. But ultimately, it's for the enemy to, 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 for you to succumb. But you will not succumb in the name of Jesus. You will not lose the battles of your life in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you will remain steadfast in the Lord. Be steadfast. He said, finally, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mouth. I'd like you to rise up tonight. And I want you to speak the word to your situation. In the course of the message, God gave us certain words. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. Said, so thou shalt he shall diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. And I, because of that, you, I will not put the disease I've put on the Egyptians upon you, for I am the Lord that heals you. The Lord said that I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospered. He said the word of God is quick and powerful, and it's sharper than any two edges words. And it pierces into the into the bones and into the marrows, and into the intents, a designer of the thoughts and intents of man. So the word of God is able for you to reveal the intention of that man against you. He's able to open your eyes to see the intention, the the the, the maneuvering, and the evil that men are orchestrating against you. When you lay hold on the word. You are able to achieve victory. I just want you to speak to your future. A silent life is a broken destiny. A silent mouth is, is a defeated life. When you remain silent in the face of battle. male begin to, to throw arrows into the camp of your enemy the arrows of your deliverance the arrows of your restoration the arrows of your victory thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrows that fly by noonday why? because the Lord is your refuge and is your present help in the time of need Brethren, your victory is assured. God has given you the weapons of your victory. It is your responsibility to use it. Every word that is being released in this pulpit is meant for your deliverance. Every word that is being released here at Covenant Family is meant for your victory. Every word that is being released is said upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of the covenant family shall begin to possess their possession. In Hosea chapter 12 verse 13 he said by the prophet the children of Israel were delivered and by a prophet they were preserved when you tap into the prophetic grace in this ministry your deliverance and your preservation is assured believe the Lord your God thou shalt be established and you believe his prophets thou shalt prosper brethren Understand that God has placed you under a prophetic covering that will ensure your victory. I 
as I put my hand in your hands to release the arrow one thing I want you to know is this God has ordained us to be here for you and we will always put our hand in your hands but don't stop throwing that arrow don't stop coming to receive don't stop coming to 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 be impacted because God has commissioned us just for the time like this and I can assure you I can I can speak to the fact and to the truth that greater glory and his exceeding grace is us this year in the name of Jesus that everything that we might have lost to this pandemic the Lord says there shall be a restoration and he said before the end of this year there will be no carryover even for you in the name of Jesus everything that God planned for you for this year I decree and declare there shall be no carryover for you in the name of Jesus just stand upon the word begin to run and pursue that which God asked for you in the name of Jesus thank you king of glory we give you praise we give you all the glory for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed put your hands together as I call Pastor Sophie to take us for them. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Just thank God for that word, the powerful word, the timely word. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the vessels that you have used, oh Lord God, to bring this word to us, Father. We thank you so much, God. Bless them, Father, and fill them the more, oh Lord God. Let the fresh word, God, my Father, come unto them, Lord. Speak to them that they may speak, oh God, my Father, your word unto us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and we bless your name in Jesus' mighty name. We have given thanks. Amen. It's giving time and it's blessing time. Amen. Praise the Lord. So quickly let us um, get to, to our pockets, wherever our offering is. And just if we need the envelope, just get one. Write your name. And just load your offering inside. Then we'll have... Yeah, we have the bucket there for the for the offering. And for those who want to give through cash up is a dollar sign. Um and then you are giving it to the covenant faith. So uh can we have the, the, the cash up account there and the other uh, account so that those who don't want to give in cash, they can do that in the name of Jesus Christ. There's no limitation. So there's no excuse that, no, I was not a charge, so I can't give. You can give from wherever you are. Because everything has, made, has been made accessible. Amen. And so let's pray and just bless the, uh, the Lord with our substance. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. For all that you have provided for us, God, we thank you for every blessing. And Father, we thank you for filling our lives with your joy. And Father, providing us, O oh Lord God, and Lord Father, giving us something to come with in your house, Lord. For Lord, you said that we should not come in your house empty-handed, O oh God. Father, we have come with thanksgiving in our hearts, God. And on top of that, O oh God, we are coming with our substances, O oh Lord Father, to say thank you, Lord God for providing for us, O oh God. And Father, as we give, O oh Lord, that you will continue providing the bread for the eater 
and the seed for the sower. What, whoever is sowing a seed, Almighty oh God, Lord, that they will continue sowing, oh Father, to the glory and honor of your name, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. As you provide, oh Lord God, Lord, the seed, and Lord, unto the fertile ground, oh God, the fertile soil, oh Father God, of a bountiful harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the open doors that you're opening. Some, some people have already given their offering, so Amen. Amen. Thank Praise you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say. It's thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Pandemic. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Everlasting Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you, Lord, even for the privilege to give at your altar. Blessed be your name, Lord. Jacob said, Indeed, God is in this place, and he therefore made an altar unto the Lord and called it better. Lord, we know you are here in this place, and every of our offerings and sacrifices shall be acceptable by you in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. And we ask, O oh Lord, that the sheep in the ticket shall be made available for everyone that has come with a heart of sacrifice. So shall it be. Many has given what they do not have, and I know that you will restore back to them 
even hundred food in the name of Jesus many are given tithes of what they have not received Lord I decree that you will surprise them beyond their imagination in the name of Jesus because you are a God that looks first at the heart than what is in the hand thank you Lord you looked at the woman that came and gave a widow's might and you looked at others that gave thousands of dollars and you say but for a fact this one this woman has given the best why because you look first at the heart before you look at what is in the hand the same way you looked at the heart of Cain and you looked at the heart of Abel and the sacrifice and the offerings of Abel was acceptable unto you. Lord I pray that as many are releasing what is in their hand, Lord even unto you Lord that their heart too will be in place for their blessing in the name of Jesus. Thank you King of glory. Receive all the honor for in Jesus mighty name we are praying.